So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to do is look at our options for rack mounting tall boy Intel nooks. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you. So basically, up until this last month, there were no options for rack mounting the Tallboy uh, Intel Nooks. So there are some options online to rack mount the smaller Intel Nooks, the low boy ones. But as you can see here, if we take a 1U rack and we stick this up there, we can see the Nook is actually just slightly taller than 1U. So what this means is no one up until this last month has actually made a rack that fits these uh, because it's bigger than one U. So I've been looking for these for a while and this last month I came across a co company called myelectronics.nl and they make these one and a half U uh, three slots Intel Nook and Raspberry Pi racks. Now if we look at this a little closer we can see that it has three spots for Nook, and right now it comes with these Raspberry Pi cutouts, which then just unscrew here from the bottom. And then it also has three ports where you can put through different adapters for your Ethernet or your HDMI uh, mainly. And my electronic sells little tiny short cables along with those adapters. Uh, but these adapters are just regular uh, Ethernet adapters you can buy, like on Amazon or any other shop. Now, the first thing I noticed comparing this, the uh, Nook adapter, with my little Raspberry Pi one, no-name one that I got off of eBay, is this is quite a bit thicker. And I would also expect that because the Nook is thicker than the Raspberry Pi, but just to me it shows a little quality there. So the first thing we need to do is remove the screw that holds the Raspberry Pi adapter in. And keep track of your screw and your nut because you'll be needing these a second and they don't stay in place. Uh, there's no retainer for them so they fly all over the place. So now you can see we have a nice hole for the nook and then if we turn that over we have these two holes which are the, where the rubber feet of the nook go and then the nook just actually attaches by that one screw right there. So now in case you're wondering, I've already put this together once and I have to say that at first I was a little worried about just having it attached by that one screw but because we're in a rack and there's no pressure besides gravity going on it uh, just the one screw seems to work with the addition of the two feet going into the grooves. Now I never noticed on the bottom of the nook, besides the two feet, there's actually screws on both sides and that is where we're going to attach the rack. And now you have two choices here. You can have the back end sticking out, so then you have your ethernet ports and your two USB ports. The only problem with that is your power port here is sticking out the front so you do have to snake a wire through and my plan was just to pop one of these out and put the wire through there. Or you could have the pretty end pointing out front and then just these all the ports will be on the back. You can do either way again because we have the screw holes on the front and the back so either way. Uh, the first time I did this, I had the front sticking out, but I'm going to just try to stick the back out, see how that looks. Okay, so we have all three attached here, and you can see pretty darn sturdy. And basically, it's just held in place by the feet and then one screw, so it's got three points of contact and that's strong enough with this little ledge here to actually hold it in place. 
pretty impressive. Now we can see here I have all the ports facing out. Uh, I don't know if I like this yet, but uh, we could pass through the Ethernet uh, if we wanted to do that. The other option is you can take out the middle or the side thing, and they do sell, there's a, they have a whole bunch of different adapters, but if you want to expose more ports, you can get one of these little adapter plates. And then instead of, say, your middle nook, you can uh, put in the adapter plate. Again, you have your Raspberry Pi if you want to do that, and that's probably what I'll eventually do. Or they even have blank out plates if you're interested in just covering up one of the holes. So I'm actually probably going to leave it this way because I have something else coming up. Uh, so basically this is a tiny pilot KVM and so basically with this you can control your non-controllable uh, computers remotely. And so on regular servers on regular servers, they have management ports where you can access your server remotely. On consumer grade hard hardware, they don't have that. So then you need something like this, which is a tiny pilot, which is actually a Raspberry Pi with a adapter board on the top and some software. And so you can order these. I'll go over these in a future episode. But what I'm going to do is attach these to a KVM or this to a KVM switch. Then I'll be able to control these all remotely. So let's put this in a rack and see how it looks. And so here it is in the rack. We have great access to the Ethernet ports, HDMI, and the USB ports. Again, we can switch this around, put it on that way. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave it this way. Uh, I probably am going to take out this nook here and put the tiny pilot there. And then that will control all four of these when I add the KVM switch. Another little pro tip here. These people have not paid me, but I just got these. I saw another YouTuber had these. These are rack studs. You can just slide in your rack and it stays on because the screws are on the outside. And then you just screw these on. So for me, I'm always changing everything. So that's an easy way to put things on and off. Uh, rather than trying to fiddle around with the bolts going in this way, which is really a bad design if you think about it. Now, one thing about this rack, I already mentioned it, it's one and a half U's. So here you can see the lines, there's one U, and then it will cover up the bottom hole or half cover up the bottom hole for your rack. So you'll have a little space here unless you get another one of these. So I was thinking about moving this up and then we can have the wires for the KVM go through here, go to uh, the nooks and to the Raspberry Pi right below there. So how much does this cost for this cute little rack? So if we go to the My Electronics website, it looks like it's 75 euros, which is about $90 American which is pretty typical for a rack like this. I had my Raspberry Pi racks 3D printed for me and it just had two slots for two Raspberry Pis and that was about the same price. So if you're looking for a tall boy nook rack, this is a good choice. Just remember it's going to take up an extra half U and that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.